Atoms of a molecule can be arranged in various ways to yield different organic compounds with different physical, chemical, and biochemical properties, which is why Jacob Bazirius in 1830 introduced the concept and coined the word isomer. Isomer has its roots from Greek, where it stems from the word isos to mean equal and meros to mean part. Isomerism takes two main forms, that is structural isomerism and stereoisomerism. Structural isomerism is further divided into positional, functional group and chain isomerism, while stereoisomerism is divided into conformational and configurational isomerism. Conformational isomerism is further subdivided into optical and geometric. For the case of this video, we shall be looking at mainly chain and conformational isomerism, specifically in alkanes. Chain isomerism arises due to the difference in the arrangement of the carbon chain in a molecule. Let's look at a simple example. For a molecular formula C6H14, we can have different structures. For example, N-hexane, 2,2-dimethylbutane, 2,3-dimethylbutane, we can have 2-methylpentane and 3-methylpentane. All these structures conform to the molecular formula C6H14. This is the typical meaning of isomerism. We have different structures for the same molecular formula. Isomerism can affect the molecular properties of a compound. Let's explore this. For illustration, let's use N-hexane and its isomer 2,2-dimethylbutane. 2,2-dimethylbutane is more spherical while N-hexane is more linear. As a result, the branched isomer has a smaller surface area of contact between the molecules, while the straight isomer has a larger surface area of contact between its molecules. This results in two weaker intermolecular forces of attraction for the spherical or the branched isomer, while the straight isomer has stronger intermolecular forces of attraction because the molecules have a larger surface area of contact. Consequently, despite the molecules having the same molecular formula, they will have different physical properties such as boiling point, melting point, viscosity, surface tension, volatility, vapor pressure, and so on and so forth, all as a result of a change in structures, in other words, as a result of isomerism. Let's explore conformational isomerism. For illustration, let's use 1-bromotochloroethane. This molecule has a carbon-carbon single bond, and the bonds that attach to those carbon atoms are capable of rotation, resulting in two different isomers, which we shall call conformers in this case. Let's number the carbon atoms in the molecule with 1 and 2. We shall represent carbon 1 with a dot and carbon 2 with a circle. And then we can draw the bonds on the carbon atoms, one and two. So this is the representation that we shall use, which is called the Newman projection. There are two different forms of repulsion in the molecule. The first one occurs between electrons on atoms that are not directly bonded to each other. This is known as steric strain. The second one is the repulsion between electrons in bonds that do not share an atom. This is known as torsional strain. These two forms of repulsions increase the potential energy of the molecule and make it unstable. Consequently, the bonds rotate around to stabilize the molecule. 
by rotating around the molecule 6 to minimize repulsions between the electron densities. This is what results into the different spatial arrangements of the bonds and hence the different conformers. The conformations can either be staggered or eclipsed. Staggered conformations are further subdivided into anti and gauche, while eclipsed conformations can also be totally eclipsed. The molecule can achieve this kind of conformation. In this case, the heavy groups, that is the bromo and chloro, are 180 degrees apart. This is the most stable form of the conformers and it is known as the staggered conformer, specifically the anti-staggered conformer. As the bonds continue to rotate, the molecule achieves another conformation, in which case the heavy groups are at 60 degrees apart. This is still staggered conformer, but it is the gauche type of staggered conformer. Further rotation achieves an eclipsed conformer in which the heavy groups are at 120 degrees apart. In this conformer, the molecule is less stable than in the previous two because there is increased repulsion between electron densities on the atoms and also in the bonds. And finally, the molecule can rotate to achieve a totally eclipsed conformer in which the heavy groups at zero degrees apart. This is the least stable conformer because there is maximum repulsion between the electron densities on the atoms and also in the bonds. In other words, there is excessive torsional and steric strain that raises the potential energy of the molecule and makes it exceptionally unstable. The staggered conformers are more stable than the eclipsed conformers because in the staggered conformation, the bonds and the atoms experience minimum repulsions. This implies that there is minimized steric and torsional strain. To wrap up, the molecule experiences torsional strain and steric strain. These are simply forms of electrostatic repulsions between electron densities in the molecule. These electrostatic repulsions make the molecule unstable because they raise the potential energy of the molecule. As a result, the bonds rotate around to minimize the repulsions and attain stability. This is the principle behind the formation of the different conformers. If this was helpful, Hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe. Thank you, and see you in the next.